Hi, welcome back to my channel. So, um, first let me just say, excuse all the fabric behind me. I had just got a bunch of fabric in for my SD orders and I haven't had a chance to put it away. It's been a little crazy. Um, so moving right along, um, Weasel is doing great. He is doing so much better. So, um, let's see, he is not lethargic. He is eating his stool are back to normal. His little eyes are nice and bright and cheery. He's playing. Uh, so I'm so incredibly grateful and thank you to everyone for all the kind thoughts and wishes. Um, I'm really, really grateful to everyone who was thinking about us and I'm really, really grateful that my baby is okay. So as a result of that whole incident, um, it, I started to think that I, you know, I had never really done a video discussing the symptoms of ferret illness. So there's lots of different ways that your ferret will tell you that they don't feel good, but sometimes ferrets are really, really good at hiding those symptoms. And so they may not, you know, you may not be able to tell because your ferret just doesn't show the signs outwardly. Um, so in cases like that, it's really good to kind of know what to look for um, when your ferret isn't well. It's also good to know what to look for if they aren't well and they are showing just regular symptoms. So what's normal and what is not normal? And when should you call the vet and when should you not call the vet? Now, disclosure here, I am not a vet. And if at any time you believe that you should call a vet for your <laughs> ferret, you should absolutely not listen to anyone on YouTube and you should call a vet. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, they're your pets and they're, and they're your babies and you, follow your gut and your instincts. So this video is just kind of some information that I feel would be helpful. So for me, I am one, you will find me at the vet before you won't find me at the vet. And that's just kind of the way I play it. I play it really on the safe side. I love them and I just don't want to see anything happen to them. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into the video and yeah, let's do it. We're going to talk about some symptoms and then I'm going to talk about some common ferret illnesses. Um, I'm not going to hit on all of them. There's a ton. So I don't, we'd be here all night if I went into detail about every um, disease, but I am going to touch on the most significant ones or the most common ones. So yeah, let's do it. Okay, so let's get into the signs and symptoms that your ferret may not be feeling well. So the first one I'm going to start with, and these are in no particular order. Um, I think they're all equally important. So there's really no reason to put them in order. So the first one is a loss of appetite. Um, if your ferret just stops eating or stops being interested in food, that is a for sure sign that something is not right. Um, I will tell you that the one of the main, there was two main things that, um, that indicated to me that weasel wasn't okay and loss of appetite was definitely one of them. So if your ferret has a habit of knowing when you're going to feed them or waiting for their food or any of that, and then all of a sudden they have zero interest at all in eating, um, that is an indication that your ferret probably doesn't feel good or that something is going on, something's going on with your ferret. The next big one, and I feel like this is a big one too, and this is the other symptom that was really uh, hit and hit, like drove it home for me that Weasel wasn't feeling well, is their stool. Um, ferret stool should not be diarrhea, and it should not be mucousy, and um, those are basically the main two things. So the thing about ferret poop, essentially, is that it really just depends on what you're feeding your ferret, is kind of what it's gonna look like. I know that people who feed kibble, it looks one way. People who feed freeze-dried, it looks one way. People who feed raw, it looks one way. And so it's hard for me to say what's normal. So I'll tell you what's not normal. What's not normal is diarrhea, runny, loose, and mucusy. That is not normal, and Weasel had basically straight diarrhea and it was very mucousy and it was just not good. Um, so that is a for sure sign that something is not right. Um, now the thing about diarrhea is that can happen sometimes. The thing about it though is that just like in humans, if too much diarrhea causes dehydration. So, you know, you gotta be careful with that. Um, I don't know that you could, you would call the vet the first time that they had diarrhea, but if that was to be consistent for, you know, three, four, five, six, seven poops, two a day, whatever, that that's not okay. Um, so that's definitely one. So another one is glassy eyes or that squinty eyes or where they're just kind of staring off into space like they're not home. Um, Weasel's eyes, I have a picture, I'll put it up uh, right here. 
of his eyes the other day and the way that his eyes were were just not that is not normal that was not normal at all so you'll know like you're you know you'll look at your ferrets today and everything's fine and you'll know when something's not a lot of times you can see it in their eyes um a runny nose a runny nose is a sign that your ferret may not be feeling well um may have a cold or something to that effect so runny nose is one of them coughing is one of them now with coughing so i know like if my ferrets I don't know, or playing around the house or something and they come across like a dusty corner or something, they may sneeze and they may, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about coughing, like coughing and then, you know, constant like sneeze, sneeze, sneeze where it's not normal. Every now and then your ferret is going to sneeze. Your ferret is going to cough on occasion. That's all normal to a degree, um, especially in situational, you know, there's, there's fuzz on the ground or they stuck their head in something they shouldn't or whatever but coughing and sneezing and runny nose is all signs that your ferret may be sick um so watch that and watch how often that is and how much how, how runny is the ferret's nose how much are they coughing um that kind of stuff so being lethargic or just being really tired for me weasel just flopped down and he would not get up he just and they sleep 18 hours a day anyway so when um uh, roughly so when when we, you know, when I'm around or I, you know, whenever I walk into the room, Weasel is up. I mean, he, that, if all the rest of them stay asleep, Weasel does not. And that, he would not get up. He just laid there. And it was so sad. And I knew that something was wrong because he was just so lethargic and just out of it. It just was not himself. And so, you know, that, you'll definitely know, that is definitely a sign something may be wrong or is wrong. Um... Let's see, weight loss. If your ferret starts to lose a lot of weight or just starts to lose weight, and I mean, first of all, ferrets don't weigh a lot anyway. So if you notice that your ferret is losing weight, then something must be going on, I would assume. Um, I'm not a vet again, but, but weight loss, and, and I'm not talking about seasonal weight loss, so there are times, um, I know that my ferrets tend to weigh more in the winter than they do in the summer. <laughs> they tend to be, um, also lose a little bit of hair in the summer months and get a little more like their hair is a little thicker in the winter months so we're not talking about seasonal um but you'll know if if that's you know it's the middle of the summer and all of a sudden they lost you know four ounces that's a lot for a ferret considering they weigh a pound and a half two pounds three pounds i mean take half you know half quarter of a pound away that's a lot for a little ferret um Let's see what else we got here. If they're disinterested in playing. So my ferrets play. They play all the time. And when they're done, they go to sleep. But like, again, I'll use Weasel. He, everyone's running around playing and Weasel just laid there. I mean, they basically ran over top of him. I mean, he just had, this wanted nothing to do with anything. He had no interest in anything and he was absolutely just wanted to sleep and he was just in his own little world and not like how he normally is. In his, he weasels in his own little world anyway, but this was like really not good. So um, just not having an interest in anything really is also a, is a good sign that something may be off or maybe wrong. Um, Let's see what else we got. So seizures. If your ferret has a seizure, there is for sure something wrong. Just call the vet. Just just call the vet. Um, and if they're pawing at their face, um, that is also a sign that something is wrong. If they're, you know, pawing or if they're making kind of like noises. Um, so, and then I know for me, Weasel was dry heated, uh, almost like he wanted to throw up, but ferrets are not the greatest at throwing up, like with hairballs and stuff. They just don't, they're not cats. Um, so if they get a hairball, they're not, you know, they don't necessarily regurgitate that like the cat does. So Weasel was kind of dry heaving and trying to throw up and, and none of that is normal at all. Um, so yeah, that was another sign. And that was for sure something that indicated something was wrong for me. Um, and then also knowing your ferret is really important too. Um, so for me, like I, Weasel is um, pretty predictable. In fact, he is absolutely predictable. I can tell you that at 5.15 in the morning and at 6.30 at night, those ferrets are waiting at their bedroom door for me to come get them. And if I do not, if I am five minutes late, they are scratching at the door. Weasel is so predictable in that I know that when I go in there during those times and I, you know, I give them certain foods um, certain food stays with them all day, but then there's certain foods they get during those two times a day. And he spends, um, 20 minutes eating. Like, I mean, not 20 minutes straight, but like his focus when I first go in is to eat. And so 
he wasn't at the door waiting for me. He didn't want anything to eat. He didn't get up to come see me. Uh, when Weasel hears my voice, he pops up like a, like a jack in the box every single time. If I go in there right now, he could be in a dead sleep. And if I say his name or he hears my voice, he just pops up. And so none of that happened. So knowing your ferrets and knowing their normal behavior and then catching when they're not doing something they normally do is really big. Okay, so now that we've gone over some symptoms of ferret illness, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna touch on a couple of um, common ferret illnesses and diseases. I'm, like I said, I'm not gonna be able to touch on all of them, um, but I will touch on some. And I'm gonna start with blockages. Blockages are very common, probably one of the more common things that happen to ferrets, particularly young ferrets, but it can happen to all ferrets. Ferrets are really inquisitive, so blockages are caused by two things mainly. Um, the first is that they ate something they're not supposed to. They ate a piece of rubber, they ate the buttons off your remote control, they ate a toy, they ate something, they did something, they ate something they weren't supposed to. The second reason that a ferret can have a blockage is um, because of hairballs. So, Unlike cats, uh, ferrets don't regurgitate hairballs and they don't just come up the way that, it's just not, it's just, they just don't do that the way the cats do per se. And so it results in a blockage. The symptoms of a blockage in your ferret are gonna, there's gonna be several, but your ferret may not display all of them. So here are some symptoms to look for if you, it just so that you know what to look for if your ferret has a blockage. First, they will, they could be lethargic very tired with no energy. They could be have lack of um, appetite. They could lose weight. They could have constipation. They could be have a swollen tummy that's sensitive to the touch. They could even have diarrhea. They could try to vomit. They could um, have squinty eyes. So all of these things could be signs that your ferret has a blockage. And so if you think for a second, a split second that your ferret has a blockage um, and they're showing any of these symptoms, um, I recommend highly, highly, highly that you call your vet. Blockages can be fatal and they can be fatal pretty quickly. Um, the thing about it is that they will, a blockage will inevitably have um, a reaction to your ferret's organs and the way that they function and the functions of their liver and all of that stuff and it can ultimately cause the body to shut down. Um, or not function correctly. And I mean, just like with people, your organs are vital. <laughs> and so when they stop working, you stop working. Um, and so if you think that your ferrets have a blockage, please call your vet. Um, more than, more likely than not, it'll be diagnosed with an x-ray um, with, and then if they can put what's called barium in, like orally they give to the, to the ferret, which will help the vet see on the x-ray if there's anything, um, that's there that that it'll help show the obstruction or what the obstruction is um and then they can often that is treated with surgery um not all the time but often um so i will put like i said i'll put links in the description for everything that i'm talking about so in case i'm missing anything or not saying anything or i left anything out you guys will have a resource to hit um, up and look at in case you need it so blockages are very common and happens to a lot of ferrets another common illness that ferrets get is the common cold or a flu. Um, the flu, just like you and I get. So we can transmit, we can absolutely transmit the flu and a cold to our ferrets as they can transmit it back to us. Um, and they can transmit it to each other. And that is not uncommon and it happens. So if you're sick and you have the flu, the coronavirus um, is transmittable to them as well. Um, so, and ferrets, I don't know that they've shown that ferrets can transmit it to humans. I'm not sure that that's been proven. The last time I checked it hadn't, but that may have changed, so don't hold me to that. But I do know that we can give it to them. Um, so if you're sick or you have any of those illnesses, please, please be careful around your ferrets. Please also wash your hands if they have it or if you have it or any of that. Um, the signs and symptoms of those Ill of flu in ferrets is fever, runny nose, cough, diarrhea, loss of appetite. Um, it can last for several weeks in a ferret. It also, your vet may give them antibiotics. Um, they may not, that's kind of, up, depends on the vet and depends on kind of what else is going on. So another very common disease in ferrets is adrenal gland disease. This is when the adrenal glands overproduce sex hormone, sex steroid. Um, and this is said to happen or be a result of early neutering and spaying. Um, it has to do, it can also be caused by uh, exposure to unnatural or artificial light. 
Um, and then also it can be caused by stress, uh, like long-term stress. Uh, so let's see. The best way to kind of explain this is that when you spay or neuter your pet, um, you are taking out either the testes or the ovaries, or so both female and male ferrets have gonads. So you could say gonads and then you'd be all incorporating everyone. But you're removing that part of the body. Um, you're leaving then the adrenal gland. And that adrenal gland t tells itself that it needs to produce the sex hormone. And so it starts to do that, um, only it overproduces and overproduces. And as a result, it causes adrenal gland disease and makes your ferret very ill. Uh, the symptoms and signs of adrenal gland disease is the, your ferret can become kind of suddenly aggressive. They can lose weight. They can become anemic. They can start to lose hair. Symmetric, so their hair loss will be symmetrical, starting at the base of the tail and moving up the body. Um, so, and there's also lots of other symptoms and signs of adrenal gland disease. And sadly, there are some ferrets who are asymptomatic and therefore there wouldn't be no signs that they would even be having, a, that this would even be going on. But if you start to see any of the symptoms that I just said, you're definitely going to want to contact your vet. So this disease is treatable. Um, there's a couple ways that they treat this. So you can get implants, which is probably, I want to say, the more popular way to treat this. Um, the implants are hormones themselves. And what they do is they help balance everything out so that that adrenal gland is not pre overproducing the sex steroid and causing this whole insane, insane like trickle down effect of illness. Um, there's also, you could do surgery. However, the surgery is not like a cure-all. Uh, basically, the surgery would amount to them removing one of the adrenal glands, but that would still leave one adrenal gland, which would still produce the sex steroid. So it may be fixed temporarily, um, but I don't believe it's a long-term fix. And so you may find yourself back in a similar situation down the road. So the next one is ferret dental disease. Um, FDD is typically due to an excess of bad bacteria up underneath the gum, gum lines. Um, this is generally caused basically by diet um, or by lack of dental care for your ferret. Um, sometimes kibbles and dry foods don't in their teeth and then it causes abscess. It can cause abscesses. It can cause tooth decay. It could be very painful. Um, your ferret may be pawing at the mouth, licking their lips. They could have bad breath. Uh, they could just have a lot of pain in their mouth. And so if you see any of this, you would want to see a vet that is capable of dealing with dental for a ferret. And I know that ferrets that have raw diets tend to have less teeth issues, um, I believe, because they are doing what nature intended and they're kind of naturally cleaning their teeth by having the bones and all of the other stuff that they um, that they eat and that kind of naturally does what needs to be done, whereas ferrets that are fed a kibble diet aren't really getting teeth cleaning naturally the way that it would be intended if they were in the wild or if they were not, you know, domesticated. Another common ferret illness is insulminoma. These are tumors that form in the beta cells of the pancreas. The beta cells are the cells that produce the hormone insulin. Insulin is used to regulate the blood sugar and by reducing the glucose in the blood. So glucose is a source of, a really important source of energy for your ferret. So when insulinomas produce all of this extra insulin, it causes the glucose levels to drop. Uh, basically the blood sugar drops. And that is really dangerous for your ferret. And it can cause a whole slew of problems. Um, and it is believed that this disease is directly linked to what your ferret eats. So basically if your ferret is fed kibble or um, which has a lot of carbohydrates which often breaks down and becomes sugars, so glucose, or if they're given a lot of treats that have a lot of sugars or syrups in them, um, that is contributed, that is believed that that plays a huge part in like the ferrets developing this disease. Also your ferret could just be predisposed, like have a pre be predisposed to this as well. Um, it is not to say that ferrets that have a raw diet won't ever get this. That is absolutely not true. Um, ferrets that have raw diets that eat perfectly healthy can absolutely get this disease. However, it is much more common that a ferret that is on a kibble diet will get this over a ferret that is not. Um, and so that's just something to think about as well. So some of the symptoms um, and signs of, of, of insulinoma in ferrets is low blood sugar, um, le being lethargic, weakness, um, drooling, weight loss. There is pawing at the mouth, um, poor coordination. They could twitch, they could have seizures. 
um, their back legs may stop working. There's all kinds of, a slew of things that can happen. And again, what happens in one ferret may not happen in the other. Some ferrets may have more symptoms than others. Um, so it kind of varies. But if you see any of these symptoms, it is, hot. It is very, very important that you contact your vet um, as soon as possible. So next we have UTIs, urinary tract infections. This is caused by bacteria in the urinary tract. Um, it's normally linked, usually linked to like E. coli, basically. Um, and if left untreated, it can cause kidney infections. Your vet, you know, it, the symptoms of this are ferrets not being able to pee, straining to pee, little tiny peas, abnormal, you know, pee that's abnormal. Um, if you see any signs of that, please call your vet immediately. Um, it is treatable but you definitely wanna catch it in time before you end up with a kidney infection. Nobody likes that, it's painful. So the next disease is lymphoma, which is cancer. Um, it affects the lymphatic system. Um, it, there's two different types. There's the juvenile, which happens around 14 months of age, and then there's um, one that happens um, as ferrets get middle-aged, a little older. Uh, basically, lymphoma is not really painful in and of itself um, but the symptoms of lymphoma if there are any symptoms a lot of ferrets don't show any symptoms of of cancer at all of this cancer they just they are asymptomatic but if they were to show symptoms they would they would be lethargic extreme weight loss um, diarrhea tarry stools they would have they could have a loss of appetite um, enlarged spleens, they could have enlarged lymph nodes, um, they would have labored breathing, maybe masses under the skin. Um, there's lots of different types of treatments. It really just depends on what your vet recommends. I know that they can do chemo and radiation, they can do surgery if it's in one area um, and they can get it out. Um, you know, sadly, a lot of times um, it's just not caught because there's no symptoms or it's in they have this disease and then they also have another disease as well so um you know it could be two things at once and so it really just depends on the situation and the prognosis as to how you treat it or if you're able to treat it or what the what is the best way to treat it but it is it does happen and unfortunately there's a lot of ferrets that get cancer as well um so yeah. So ferrets can also get internal parasites. These parasites are transferable between eat the ferrets and some of them are even transferable to us as humans. Um, they can get them from like running around at like the pet store or they could get them when they come from the pet store. They can get them from your dog. Fleas um, can, they can also get them from like certain kind of like flea infestations, all kinds of stuff. They're treated basically with an antibiotic and they're diagnosed through a fecal sample. Um, some ferrets may show no symptoms at all and some may show symptoms of mild to severe diarrhea. So it just depends. Um, normally when you go for your routine checkup, your vet will do a stool. Um, they'll take a fecal sample and just run tests anyway. That's pretty routine, at least my vet does that. Um, just to make sure so and for me because I have multiple ferrets if one of the tests comes up positive ever then they would treat all four of the ferrets because obviously it's highly contagious some of these um, parasites so another um, disease in ferrets is heart disease specifically um, dilated cardiomyopathy so there are other types of um, heart disease in fer that ferrets can get as well there's a there's a few types um, the most common though is the cardiomyopathy that is the enlargement of the heart um, and basically it just gets to the point where it just cannot function anymore there are treatments to this disease um, and I believe that you, you know, there's not a cure, but you can treat until the ferret is just not comfortable anymore. And so it's just not something that you want to put your ferret through anymore. But um, it is definitely something that happens and can happen to ferrets. There are, I believe, two or three other types, two other types of heart diseases. Um, there's one that has to do with the valves and I'd have to look the other one up. But I did the most common, which is the um, dilated cardiomyopathy. Uh, so if you were to notice any symptoms, and a lot of times there are not a lot of symptoms, but labored breathing, um, if you notice your ferret is, is breathing faster than normal, like when they're sleeping or um, just in general, that may be a sign. Um, weakness, uh, coughing is a sign. Now please just note that these are also symptoms of like a million other diseases. So it's kind of hard to, you know, you don't want to just say, hey, my, my ferret must have cardiomyopathy that may not be the case 
these symptoms mimic lots of other things. As a matter of fact, a lot of the symptoms that ferrets have kind of can be attributed to multiple different diseases. That's why it's so important that if you see symptoms in your ferret that you go to a vet. We are not vets, I am not a vet. Um, so while I can acknowledge these symptoms, it's important that the vet diagnose the symptoms. So these are just some things to look for in that disease as well. <clears throat> okay, so that's the list that I have for ferret um, diseases and my list of symptoms. I picked the most common or the ones that affect ferrets more often. Um, there are lots and lots of ferret diseases and there are symptoms I'm sure far beyond the ones that I listed. I will put links and resources in my description um, for anybody who wants to kind of investigate further, has any additional questions. Um, and so I just want to just kind of throw this out there. If you notice your ferret acting different or experiencing any of those symptoms, please don't wait. Please contact your vet. Um, waiting when it comes to ferrets, wait, just waiting things out can often just be detrimental. Um, things go downhill really, really quickly. So I would just recommend that if you see any of those symptoms that you just contact your vet. I cannot stress that enough. Um, and also just know your pet. A lot of times you will know, you know, I know my pets. I know when they're not acting right. I know when something is off. Um, I know when they're not showing any symptoms, but they're just not acting normal. So, you know, there's it's kind of like you got to use your better judgment and just kind of go with your gut and for me I always like I said it earlier in the video I just always play it safe I'd rather be safe than sorry um, cost me an arm and a leg but I love my babies and they're completely worth it to me so thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please feel free to drop them in the comment section if you have any comments drop them in the comment section and I'll see you next time